Hello everyone, David here from the Wargaming Parrot, and today's video is one of those very requested videos. It's all about parrot hormones. You guys often ask questions about hormones, what they are, what causes them, how to manage them, and so I thought I'd do a video on it. In this video, I'm going to go through what parrot hormones are, what the common causes are, and ways you can manage them. So firstly, what is a hormonal parrot? A hormonal parrot is basically a parrot who is ready to breed, is in breeding mode. They just want to follow their instincts, they want to reproduce and make babies and just follow their natural life cycle. So what are the signs of a hormonal parrot? Now you may notice some behavioural changes, you may notice increased um, nesting behaviour, for example, fluffing up, sitting in one area and getting very aggressive and territorial over it. General territorial behaviour, increased noise, increased aggression, all sorts of um, signs that we don't really like to see and that can be quite stressful for other parrots in the household. These commonly manifest in things like, for example, dive bombing your partner, or screaming all day, or just biting where they wouldn't have before. And it can be, as I said, distressing for you and other birds in the house, so it's important to be able to know what to do and how to manage them. Another common sign of a parrot who is very hormonal is also being naughty. This can involve being naughty with toys, attempting to be naughty of other parrots, and all sorts of things. And that can sometimes stress the other parrots out, especially when they don't want to and they've been chased around everywhere. So that's a, quite a big sign as well. Leading on from this as well, another sign which I actually um, initially sort of like dismissed but is exceptionally common is regurgitation. Now sometimes parrots will regurgitate for each other as a sort of bonding thing, a friendship thing. But if it's excessive and it's lots of it, that could be a very strong sign of hormonal behaviour. So we talked about what they are and how they manifest and what signs there are of them. So what actually triggers power hormones? And I think it's very important to realise what the triggers are, because once you know what the common triggers of power hormones are, you can start to manage them, which I'll go on to in my next section. Now sadly, the first trigger for power hormones isn't something we can do much about, and that's the seasons. Parrots tend to get hormonal in the spring and summer in the Northern Hemisphere, so flip down his head for the Southern Hemisphere, and there's nothing we can do about that. All we can do is learn how to manage it and just help them through it. It's just something they'll go through seasonally. Some parrots may exhibit more hormonal behaviour during these seasons, some parrots less. Depends on your, how you're managing it, and also depends on the individual. The next common cause of hormonal behaviour are drastic changes in the environment. By this I mean something like completely rearranging a room, moving house, or maybe bringing another bird home, or a baby, another pet. Something big, in, a big change in the environment could cause stress and trigger off hormonal behaviour. Another very common cause of hormonal behaviour, and probably one of the biggest causes, is lack of sleep. Parrots need lots and lots of sleep, so if they're not getting enough sleep, it can easily trigger hormonal behaviour and also other side effects like aggression and increased territorial behaviour. Another common cause of hormonal behaviour is cage covering. Now this is kind of a controversial one because lots of people like to cover their cages. Some people do it with the best of intentions just to try and give their parrots the best dark sleep. However, sadly, if you cover your parrot's cage, it's creating a nice dark environment, potential nesting sites, and it can lead to hormonal triggers. So it's important to bear that in mind when you're cage covering. Next up, toys can be a trigger. Now, when I mean toys, I'm talking about toys with reflective surfaces. Sometimes plastic toys can do it, but basically if you have, for example, a mirror, which is one of the most common causes of this, your bird may get hormonal because they're constantly interacting with that mirror, they're getting a bit naughty of it, and that can trigger some hormonal behavior. Toy placement can also be a factor. For example, if there are lots of sites where your um, bird can um, be naughty with a toy, just to keep it PG-13, then that can also lead to increased hormonal behavior because they're constantly doing the naughty with the toy, and you may need to think about moving it around and changing things up. When you're looking at triggers for parrot hormones, one of the first places you should look is diet. Diet plays a massive factor in so many aspects of a parrot's life, such as training, enrichment, um, foraging, and now hormones. For example, if your parrot has a all seed diet, or it's very high in fat, very high in protein, very high in packing materials such as soya, wheat, and if it's very high in sugar as well, which causes excess energy, these are all things that can lead to hormonal behavior. So generally, you need to make sure you keep an eye on that diet because the diet is a massive factor. My last sort of trigger for parrot hormones, a very common one, is inappropriate touching. Now I actually have a video on how to pet and cuddle your bird, which I'll leave a card for now, which is very important you watch because 
inappropriate contact with your parrot can be immensely hormonally triggering, especially if you're the favorite person in that house. So be, do bear in mind that how you touch your parrot can affect how um, naughty they get and how hormonal they get. So I've covered what are parrot hormones, what are the signs of parrot hormones, I have covered what triggers them, so now it's time to cover what you can do to help with parrot hormones. My first tip for helping with parrot hormones is a very easy one, and that is simply adding chamomile to their diet. Now I have a video on flowers that you can feed your parrot, which I'll leave a card for now. I also have a great link to some decent organic chamomile, because you want your chamomile to be the best quality on my Amazon store, so do check that out if you want to see an example of good chamomile. But chamomile is one of those proven flowers it's scientifically proven to help with hormonal behaviour. In us humans and in parrots, it has a calming effect. This translates to their diet and to helping to curb the parrot hormones. Because if it has a calming effect, and it's also taking the edge off that hormonal behaviour, that aggression, that stress, it helps to tamp it down a bit. Now, I'm not saying if you feed your feed caramel to your parrot, it's going to just immediately solve all your problems. However, it will help, especially if you take a holistic approach and take on all of the suggestions in this video. So. If you do give some chamomile, you can feed it in multiple ways. I'm not going to talk about them now because the flowers video covers that, but do consider strongly adding chamomile to your diet and maybe even some other herbs, flowers and spices too. A very easy way to help with parrot hormonal behaviour is increasing the amount of sleep. Now I mentioned sleep is a very common trigger for hormones. Sleep is also a very common solution to parrot hormones. Generally, parrots need to be getting 12 hours sleep minimum. And then that's where the cage covering comes in a little bit. People try to provide that dark environment, but again, we'll cover that a little bit later. So you want to be giving 12 hours of sleep minimum to your parrot. If you can't manage that, you are going to see increased aggression generally and more hormonal behavior. So if you can find a way to fit it around your routine, might maybe put it to bed a little bit earlier in the day, or just adjusting how you do things, maybe playing things a little bit quieter, moving to another room, that can help lots. Further to this, if you want to kind of shock a parrot out of a hormonal cycle, you can increase this sleep to 14 hours for about a week. If you do this, it kind of um, confuses the parrot's body. They think, oh, hang on, it's winter now. I don't really want to be mating. So it's another sort of tool in your arsenal. Now I mentioned covering my previous point and this is something else that triggers hormones and something you can do to help mitigate them. If you do cover your parrot, I'm not necessarily saying that's a good or a bad thing because I don't want to have a crack at anyone. However, if you cover your parrot and you're noticing increasing uh, parrot hormonal behaviour, you could consider reducing that covering to partial covering. This is something we often suggest to our clients. All you have to do is just cover the back of the cage and the sides and leave the front open. This also has this sort of other sort of fringe benefit of your parrot being able to see outside if they're a cockatiel reducing night frights. Or you could just cover the top portion of the cage. Again, reducing those sort of nesting site, um, reducing that sort of nesting site um, impulse, but also letting plenty of light in, but just giving that little dark space for them to rest in. Again, as a parrot owner, it's up to you to decide what's best for your parrot because you know them best. However, we have noticed that covering is a known hormone trigger and reducing it can help. Getting your parrot's diet right is one of the easiest and best ways of helping with hormonal behavior. This means reducing the amount of fat and sugar in there, reducing the amount of protein, although protein is good in certain circumstances, just for maybe the hormonal season, sort of keeping an eye on what you've got there, increasing the amount of vegetables, making it nice and healthy. It's like with us humans, it helps immeasurably in all sorts of things. The other thing that's worth mentioning here is if um, your parrot's diet has a very mushy consistency, for example, if you regularly freeze your chop and you don't add anything in to sort of uh, take up the moisture, that mush can have the same consistency as regurgitated food and that can also contribute to hormonal behavior. So it's important to keep in mind the consistency of your parrot's chop. If it's very mushy, you can either just prepare it fresh or just add something into it, for example, chamomile, to soak up some of that mush and make consistency a little bit drier so it will have less of that um, texture. This one may seem a bit obvious considering what I said about triggers, but removing inappropriate toys is another really good thing that you can do. So that means no mirrors, potentially no bells, depending on how your parrots interact with them. We always recommend safe bells. We're keen on traditional bells, they come with all sorts of dangers. I've got a video on that which I'll leave a card for now just so you can see what's good and not. But yes, managing what sort of toys you have in the cage can be very important to helping with hormonal behavior. It's also worth bearing in mind what sort of areas the parrots may want to do naughty things in and maybe potentially changing up the cage and regularly changing the environment in there just to sort of um, keep it fresh 
and make sure there's no sort of sites they want to go to regularly. Similarly, it may be an obvious one, no cozy huts. Um, cozy huts, again, come with all sorts of dangers, I'm not gonna go into them now, but cozy huts are one of those things that are just notorious for triggering, triggering parapolar behavior. So keep in mind, you may want to take them out. Another tip I have for helping with parrot hormones is curbing excess energy. A tired parrot is a it's generally less hormonal and aggressive parrot. So it's worth keeping in mind if they've got lots of energy and they're on that big sort of fatty diet, that's gonna give them lots of energy and make them think, okay, I've got all this excess energy, maybe it's time to mate and breed. So if you can keep them um, busy through foraging activities, through toys, like some of the examples I have in my Amazon store, um, there's lots of lovely shreddable chewable toys, um, just keep them busy and just make sure they're getting an energy out. So you can do this through toys, you can do this through foraging, you can do this through flying and training. There's all sorts of lovely ways you can get this energy out. And again, the more energy you get out, the better it is for them and the more fun they have as well. I mentioned inappropriate petting and also left a, a card for it so how to do it properly earlier in the video. But petting properly is so important. If you're petting your parrot all along the wings, touching their tail lots, even touching them down below, don't want to be doing any of that, it could cause all sorts of problems. So touching them appropriately is so important. You want to be keeping your contact with your parrot generally around the head and the neck because that's the sort of area where it's affection and not naughtiness. So keep in mind where you're touching your parrot. Occasionally touching your parrot elsewhere, especially if it's necessary, for example, clipping um, toenails or maintaining their beak, making sure they're okay is fine. But generally you want to be avoiding touching their wings, touching their tail and all sorts of areas because it's a big hormonal trigger. So guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful and it gave you some tips on recognizing and managing your parrot's hormonal behavior. If you have any questions, as usual, feel free to leave them in the comments. But in the meantime, take care, have an awesome day.